Welcome back to the channel everyone. Recently it's been brought to my attention that some people think I'm a bit high strung, try too hard, and need to relax a little bit on camera. Well today, I've got a really relaxing episode for you and I can't wait to share it. Today we're gonna to be going over the basic techniques on how to build a simple square tubing frame. We're gonna go over the proper way to cut your material, the proper way to lay it out, as well as some great fabrication techniques and finishing your welds to make it the best frame that you can make. Let's go get some material. Building a simple square tubing frame is a great starter project because anyone can do it with minimal tools and these fabrication techniques will translate to not only square tubing at different sizes, round tubing, angle iron, and a lot of other shapes of steel. Oh, gee whiz, talk about pumping some iron, huh? <laughs> oh, before we can get too crazy and just ripping and a tearing on some metal here, and you can cut this with either a chop saw, a band saw, you can use yourself an angle grinder, but really you want something to hold some of these angles nice and true so that you make sure you make a good old cut. The first thing that I do to make sure that I have happy little cuts is make sure that my back plate is nice and square. I don't always trust these little angles on the back side. They're little devils, aren't they? I wanna put my square right up against it and make sure that I see no light, no cracks, and that's how I know I've got a nice straight edge to cut against and it's nice and perpendicular. After you've got the guide nice and straight and square so you can cut perpendicular on your tubing, you want to make sure everything nice is level. Now this old dog here is a little cattywampus, but it's okay. I can still see the light underneath the tubing. As long as it's sitting flat against the bottom of my saw, everything should be all right. And I can adjust that with this silly old jack stand back here. <laughs> and then we can lock it in place, get her nice and tight, and we can make our first practice cut. I like to just cut a little bit of a piece off. One good tip is never trust a factory end. Take a square to it, make sure it's nice and straight, otherwise cut yourself a nice square edge on the end of that factory piece. We want to make sure all four sides are the same length, and we've got ourselves a true cutting saw. Fabulous. A couple tools that I always keep with me by the saw is a speed square, a tape measure, a silver streak pencil, and a small file. Today, we're gonna to be building a 20 inch by 20 inch square tubing frame. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tape measure, mark 20 inches, use my speed square, make a nice bolt line with my silver streak pencil so that I have something to follow and look at for my saw here. I'll drop down the saw, make sure I'm cutting on the proper side of the line. We want this material. We don't need this material. This blade is gonna leave what's called a kerf. It's gonna remove material. So if I cut on the wrong side of the line, I'm making my piece that I need 20 inches a little short, likely by up to an eighth of an inch. So I need to be careful and make sure I cut on the left side of the line. Now they always say to follow the golden rule, measure twice, cut once. We only measured once and we've got it right on the chili. What a bunch of hullabaloo. Now, while that is an important rule to follow, you just simply trust in yourself. Believe that you know what you're doing. Now, when you come to the occasion where you actually do make that silly little mistake, go back to measuring twice because you suck at using a tape measure. I'm glad I measured twice. It's not quite 20. Silly me. I like to get down here eye level with the saw. This helps me line up my cut a little bit better and tell the saw, let it know that I think we're equals. Perfect. Before you cut anything, be sure to tighten this silly old goose down. Otherwise, you'll let your material start walking on you and it'll move or it'll catch the saw and then you just have a bad day. Now we still have a couple more pieces to cut to make this 20 by 20 frame. We've got two of these pieces so far and they're cut square on both ends. We could go ahead and fit it just like this and leave one end open, but we're not gonna do that because that's sloppy and that looks ugly and tacky. Unless you just wanna do it in that way, then that's fine. But we wanna learn how to properly miter or cut 45s on the ends of our tubes so that we get the perfect fit up and the perfect angle. 
Next, we'll take our salt, change it to this 45 degree angle, but you can see there's a little wiggle on these numbers, so I never trust them. I pull it to where I think is close to a 45 degree angle, and I'll use my square one way or another to find that angle next to the side of my saw so that everything is nice and 45. And then that's when I trust this saw for a 45 degree cut. And now we're ready to cut miters. Now there are a thousand ways to skin a cat, as they say. And we're gonna be cutting 45 degree cuts on the ends of our square tubing. And these are already cut nice and square. So all we'll do is just take this speed square, line it up with the edge of our tubing, make sure it's nice and snug. And then we're gonna give it a line right there, a happy little line. Once that happy little line is on there, we can line that up with our saw and cut a 45. And we wanna make sure we do that to the opposite side and make sure that they're both facing the right direction. If they're not facing the right direction, your corners will be off and we won't like that. We'll have to start right on over. Now, this is a slower method of if you just go ahead and lay out those 45s to begin with. I'll show you that next. One extremely, extremely important thing to remember is once you've made your first cut on a piece of tubing and you wanna make a steel frame, you can't just simply use the same side of the tubing to get that cut. You'll see that we are now going the wrong direction. We're making our miter across the way we need. So we need to roll that tubing to the other side in order to make the proper cut on the right side of the tube. One easy way to check your 45 cuts. Now these again were already cut to 20 inches and we just needed to put 45s on either side so that we get a nice 90 degree angle. But how we know if we've done it right is we can look right at the edge of this square tubing. You'll notice there's about an eighth of an inch wall left right there at the edge and it's kind of flat instead of real sharp, which is fine. This is gonna help for a nice stronger fit for a stronger weld. We'll have a little groove that we can set a happy little weld in. Whereas if I cut them right to the edges, I'll have to make a fusion weld or maybe not as deep penetrating of a weld. And again, it depends on the finish that you're looking for. But while that is very effective, we made a lot more cuts than we actually needed to. So let's try to speed things up a bit. Instead of cutting just straight square pieces, we've already got our end, it's already cut at a 45. We've already got one done with no measurements whatsoever. We cut the square end off at that 45 degree angle. We didn't even pay attention. We just cut just a, a little hunk off. So now all we gotta do is roll it to where the total length side is facing up. And this is where this silly bird gets in, in the way because it could give you a false measurement by a 16th of an inch. And those, those 16ths really do add up when it comes to talking to fabrication. The next thing we'll do is find that little, little scamp of a silver streak that likes to run off on me. Where'd you go? You silly little thing was right in plain sight. I'm we'll gonna take this, measure it at the 20 inches that I'm looking for. We'll take our square tubing or our speed square, mark a freshy, a nice fresh line. Really nice, clean line. Let's get a closer look. We marked our first little line at 20 inches. Now that's not where we're gonna make the cut. We're gonna roll this tubing towards me every single time, as long as we're making a frame. We need to make sure that that 45 gets cut that way. So all we really need to do is line up that line from the previous side with our speed square. And just like that, we have that 45 cut that we need. We'll push her on down the line, line up that saw blade. We wanna be cutting on the side that we don't want. A little wiggle, a little wiggle. To make sure that we get that perfect cut. Now the reason why this is just a better option is with these we had to make one square cut to cut to length and then we had to make two more miter cuts. With this one we cut the original end off at a 45 and we made one cut so only two and from here on out if we're making miter cuts at a 45 degree angle we only need to make the one cut instead of three per piece we just need one. 
outstanding. Now, one thing to consider when doing the faster option is you're not gonna be getting that, that square end anymore. You're always gonna have this sharp point, which is fine if that's what you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for more structural integrity and you want that flattened end, well, now we've gotta grind that flattened end, which is perfectly acceptable. But if we grind this down to get that flattened end roughly an eighth of an inch off either side, now we're a quarter inch short. So if you want those structural corners, make sure that you measure, for example, this being 20 inches, measure it 20 and a quarter. That way, when you trim those sides, you won't be losing from your overall length and you'll be where you want it to be. And the biggest difference between those two corners is the difference between having a nice sharp edge after finish to having a nice roundage, more radius of an edge. Now this is for the more structural stuff. This is a weld that got a nice corner to corner on it, whereas this is more just fused right there on the edge. Now it's welded on the other three sides just fine. So I wouldn't say that it's any structurally less strong, but maybe just by a hair. We're gonna go for these sharper corners today. Now don't be the welder that doesn't prep their material. Grab yourself a quick grinder and just hit all four of those sides. Anywhere a weld touches should be nice shiny steel. That quick, that one step will make your welds that much better. Okie dokie then. Well, we've got our material that's nice and prepped, cut to length perfectly. So now we're just gonna jig it up on my fixture table here. Oh, what's that? You don't have a fancy fixture table? Oh, you're building your steel frame for the table that you're trying to build. So you don't even have one. Well, let's see if we can't do it another way. Well, welcome down here to my shop floor. It sure is filthy, full of grinding dust and nice and sharp pieces of metal. But this is where a lot of y'all are gonna be building your steel frames. So this is where we're gonna be building ours today. And silly me, I cut this one at the wrong angle. That's a good example of what not to do. As you can see, those angles are not the way they should be. Let me go cut them. As my father always told me, do what you can afford. And in this case, we ordered a little bit more material because there's always something to account for for those oopsie poopsies. So we're gonna make sure that we cut this one the right direction this time. I'll even make sure that I line it up and make sure it's cut the right way. Let's get our equipment on. We've got the Everlast Typhoon 230. What a spectacular rig here. I like this Typhoon quite a bit. I've grown quite fond of it. We're gonna be running our TIG torch today. The tricky part is gonna be getting this ground on those tubes when they're all put together. But as of right now, we can just stick our ground right in the end of them. Now building a frame, no matter where you build it, jack stands on a table or on the ground, it is easier to build with jigs and fixtures, but it's not necessary. You can see though, that the ground is not level. That's the biggest problem but we can still work with it with just a little bit of gumption. We're gonna line everything up. We're only gonna be using a couple squares and a tape measure and our welding machine. That's that little unlevel bit, but as long as we get the inside corners matched up with the outside, and I even like to watch these little lines that are on the side of the tubes. I like to make sure that those are in, in line as well. Put my square in, I purposely allow for a little bit of gap right here at the top. So while keeping pressure on the corner here, I'll put my square in and I actually want to see about almost a sixteenth of an inch of it not being square. That way when I put my first tack in right here on the side, I will it will pull inside. We had a lot of amperage for this tack well with this Everlast Typhoon. It should pull it. If not, that's okay. This is the place where we can adjust it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tack the further down corner as well. I wanna try to leave it on the ground as much as possible. If I need to get a filler metal, I might need to. Got some 16th inch TIG wire here. Quick weld there. 
want to make sure that we're still nice and if we're square or not. It does need a bump in, but this is the place to do it because I only have two tacks on the inside. Since both of my tacks are on the inside and I need to come in, that'll work. If I put a tack on this back side, I won't be able to adjust it at all. So now's the time to do it. I can put that square on, I can bend it, bump it, get it to where it's perfectly square, the way I like it. And then I can tack this backside and really seal the deal. Now we've got our first fit done right here. Now we could move on to this other side and then do this corner and then do this corner last. And it's okay to do it that way, but if you're off at all in any of these three, by the time you get to the fourth one, you're usually very bad. This ends up being the worst one if you're off anywhere else. So I like to actually set this one aside and then just replicate what I did one more time with these two sets in the same spot so that I know that they're the same. Hold it down, tack, 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 and then we'll put the other two together. That way we split the differences on these two corners. If these two, if there is anything off, it'll be here and we can split the bad between two instead of having all the bad in one corner. Now here is where you might run into a problem. We've got perf two perfectly square pieces and they're honestly looking like they're fitting up just absolutely great. But now my ground cannot fit anywhere and there's no open ends. So it's not a bad idea to take a piece of scrap that you had, a drop piece, go ahead and weld it somewhere that's not super important, you'll blend it down later. Gotta put your ground on. Couple cute little tacks to keep it there. Try to keep it out of the way from our square so we can still get a square in there. And these are looking great. It looks like we just need to line everything up. I'm not gonna even check square on anything else. I'm just gonna tack here. And then go to the absolute opposite side to check it before I put any more tacks. It looks absolutely great. And now I'll alternate tacking one to the other. When you get three on one, you pretty much bought that one. It's not going to move. Using this spot weld feature, I'll pick up the stupid filler metal. Once we get all four tacks on all four corners, we can take our ground off and this just pops right off with little to minimal blending needed. Now I'm gonna come off the floor here because my knees hurt and I don't need to. We can still build and we can still do everything on the table. I won't clamp anything down, but I'm too old for this floor stuff. We're gonna come back to the Typhoon. We're gonna change it off of spot fast tack. We're gonna turn that off. Go back to the normal, regular degular. We're gonna run this, this pulse with the triangle pulse, high frequency start. We're gonna use a lot of amperage. However, we're gonna be pulsing. So we're gonna be able to bust through this eighth inch steel and get a nice full pin weld without having to put any bevels or grooves on anything. And it should weld real nice. You might take an acetone wipe and get this thing nice and clean before welding. I'm choosing TIG welding today. You can weld this with any process that you like. As far as square tubing goes, the wall thickness is very important. And uh, you know, this is a really simple application. So TIG welding will do make for nice, pretty welds. I don't want a lot of sanding to do. That's why I chose the process instead of MIG. MIG welds might be a little bit more humped up uh, and a little bit more grinding. So I'm gonna take a little bit of extra time to TIG weld these. However, without anything being clamped on to get something from twisting, welding causes distortion. We do not want to bend or twist this perfect square around. The best way to avoid that without clamps is going to be to move your welds around the piece. We might weld this outside corner here. 
Well, that means you gotcha. I'm gonna weld this outside corner over here. Same thing, we're gonna alternate the four sides and the four corners so that we don't pull something one way versus the other. Let's get to blazing. Wow, spectacular. Wow, what an outstanding autogenous TIG weld. Once the outside corners are done, we move to the inside and bounce back and forth. Well, gee whiz, this triangle pulse from Everlast here on this Typhoon really packs a wallop. It's a real nice, consistent weld. We've got a little hiccup right here, just a happy little accident, but wow. Just wow. These are looking good on these fillet welds on the inside and outside corners. Let's move on to the butt joints. I said butt. Now the difference between these butt joints and the corner joints, not only are we gonna do the weld on the opposite side, but we're also gonna flip it over. That way we can avoid everything pulling from one side to the other constantly moving. If we're not clamping things down, we've got to be bouncing around. Well, now that the old welding is done, we can move on to the finish work. We want to make sure that these welds are nice and flat and smooth. So we want some nice finished welds. That means we really don't want a whole lot of evidence that they were even there in the first place. I've got myself a 60 grip flap wheel and we're gonna take it to it. We're only gonna pull, we're not gonna push. That way we get a nice even blend. After we get that and we hit all the sides with our 60 grip flap, we'll take our 80 grip die grinder and just kind of blend anything else in. But make sure our grinding marks are staying the same direction so that everything looks nice and tidy. And that's that, that's our steel frame right there. Wow, isn't that wonderful? We give her the last test and see if she rocks. Ooh, it's got a little bit of a wiggle in it. You know, it's not that bad, but let's throw in the scrap in with the others. Remember guys, this is a beginner's project, so it's likely you're gonna make mistakes. But when you do make those mistakes, figure out why. Why did that go wrong? Why is it crooked? Why is it out of square? Learn from those mistakes. And then eventually you'll just have a big old pile. And then you can take that pile of happy little accidents and turn it into some abstract functioning art. We've got a bunch of steel frames right here, just all jumbled up and it's gonna have a nice glass top over top of it. And it's gonna be a nice functioning piece of art inside someone's home. Sold this one for a nice penny. You never know what you can do just building something just as simple as a square frame, rectangle frame, whatever it is, whatever it's for. As always guys, thanks for watching and thanks Everlast for the Typhoon 230, man, that's a really slick TIG weld machine. We got some nice, flat, smooth, crispy welds on this uh, piece of art here. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Check us out inside the Weld app. See you on the next one. As my dad would always tell me, where's that silver streak? It's right here again.